We've just started to build our crypto dashboard uh, live view, and we already have the feeling that we are piling up a lot of code into a single crypto dashboard live view model. Uh, it's not just about the template uh, in the render function. Uh, we could easily move it into a template file. The risk is to find us with a single massive live view model which handles every aspect of our page, making the code harder to read and maintain. This page already has different parts which have uh, different responsibilities. For example, the product cards where each own shows uh, its uh, product price and the toolbar with a drop down uh, to add products uh, to the dashboard. So just quoting the uh, live view documentation, components are a mechanism to compartmentalize state, markup and events in live view. So we can move uh, a part of the live view's logic and related template into separate components. So we start by moving the product cart, the part inside the for comprehension, into a live component. Uh, so we, we call it a product component. And a live component lives in the same live view process and can be stateless, which pretty much renders a template, or stateful, which keeps its own state and handles its own events. We start with the simplest one, which is a stateless uh, product component. So let's start by creating a new file, product component. So uh, it's at pointy coins, web product component. So we use the Poetic Coins web live component macro. And for a stateless component, we have just one callback, which is mandatory, which is render, and two optional. So this is uh, render assigns, and two optional uh, callbacks. The first is mount which just uh, needs uh, one argument, which is the socket, we will see later, and then update assigns socket. So these two are optional and render is mandatory. So let's move this div here inside the product component. So this returns a live view template. Okay. So since here we are using uh, the helpers, we need to import the helpers, the product helpers. Put it on swap, product helpers. Then here, to render uh, a live component, we use the function live component. So where the first argument uh, is the socket, then the components module, so pointy coins web, product component, and then we pass the assigns uh, we need in the product component. Uh, so what do we need? We need the product and the trade. So we pass the product, product, and the trade. So 
And inside the template here, we just need to uh, do a few changes. So product is now in assigns. So we need to refer to the product in assigns. Same here. The trade is the one in assign, so trade price with the at product, product, and trade traded at. So we moved the product card inside uh, the for comprehension into a product component, and we call live component passing a socket the uh, product component module and the assigns, so the data we want to uh, pass to the product component, in this case, product and trade. And we just implement the render callback and we use the two assigns, product and, and trade uh, directly in the template and we return a live view template. So the idea is to have uh, for each card a product component. And remember, this component lives in the same uh, live view process. And as expected, we get the same result. Okay, before going on, let's um, remove the flash messages because they're quite annoying. So what about the stateless uh, mount and update uh, callbacks? Let's start with mount. Mount, which has, it's called only with the socket. And it can be used to initialize the data. For example, if we have, um, I don't know, an empty list uh, to assign to the socket, we can do it here. So socket, assign, uh, socket, uh, and something else, uh, for example, trade, and we can set it to nil and return OK and the socket. So we don't need to uh, initialize any, uh, any data. So we leave it as it is, or we can remove it. It's exactly, uh, it's exactly the same. Uh, I leave it so we can see the logs. So what I want to do is to print the process ID. So we can see the pro that the process ID is the same here and um, is, is the same as the live view process ID. So label uh, mount. Then we have the update assigns socket so this callback is called with the assigns. These assigns are the assigns we pass here when calling live component. And uh, here we can uh, transform this data or process these assigns and uh, add new assigns uh, to the socket. So the default update callback just uh, merges these, uh, these assigns into the socket, like this. Socket, assign, it takes the socket, and it merges all the past assigns, and it returns the OK socket. So if we don't implement uh, the update callback, we know that all the past assigns are merged in uh, in the component assigns. So I leave the callback so we can so we can print a log also here, update and then log also here, render. And let's add a log also here to see what is the uh, live view process ID. Okay, let's refresh. 
see the terminal. So the connected, so the stateful live view process is uh, 475. So let's see what happens if we add a new product. So when we add a new product, it will be, so it first renders uh, the product uh, with a trade, uh, with a price, and then every time uh, the live view process receives the, a new trade, it uh, uh, re-renders the, um, the component. And as you can see, the process ID is always the same, is 475. And we see that for every trade, we have a new cycle. Um, we have a mount, an update, and the render. So every time the trades map is updated, um, we saw that the live component is re-rendered. Okay, but what happens if we have many products, like a list of products? So we start with no products, we add Bitcoin US dollar, and we add Ethereum US dollar, and we add Litecoin US dollar. So let's inspect. And what we see is that if we go inside the dynamic part, that every time there is a new trade, so for example, if uh, we receive uh, just a trade for BTC, all the components are re-rendered and all the dynamic values are sent every time uh, to the client. This happens because LiveView doesn't perform change tracking inside comprehensions. Uh, LiveView makes an optimization. It understands uh, what is static and what is dynamic inside a comprehension. So it only sends the dynamic values to the client. Still, if we have many products, it could be an issue to receive all the products dynamic values inside the for comprehension every time something changes, especially if each product receives many trades per second. A way to handle this problem is using stateful components. So to make the product component stateful, we just need to pass a unique ID when calling a live component. For example, in an app where we use Acto with a database, the unique ID could be the ID of the item we want to render uh, with the component, like a user or a chat group or a message. In our case, we can make the product components stateful, setting the component ID to the product struct. So for example, ID product which is unique since we render only one product component for each product. Since this component is now stateful, it keeps its own state and it can handle uh, its own events. So instead of keeping the trades in live view, each single product component can be independent and keep its own state like for example, the most recent trade. So instead of uh, getting the trades from a trade map, we can just enumerate the products, pass the, uh, the product uh, as an ID, and we don't need to uh, pass any, any trade. So with this for comprehension, we just enumerate the products and we render a live component for each product, setting the ID uh, to the product struct. We've just made an important decision because we can decide where we want to keep the data, like products and trades. So we can keep everything in, uh, for example, in this case, uh, in the crypto dashboard uh, live view, for example, or letting the components uh, get and manage their own data. So in this case, we just went uh, with the latter. This time with the comprehension, we just enumerate 
uh, the products list and render a live component uh, for each product um, just passing the ID. We don't pass any trade. The component itself uh, will need to get the data in some way. So let's move to the product component. And uh, let's see uh, first the life cycle of a stateful component, which is a little bit different uh, from uh, what we've seen before for a stateless component. So as before, we have a mount callback, which is optional. And then we have uh, an update callback, which again is optional. There is another callback, which is called preload and it's invoked with a list of assigns. So these three callbacks are, um, are optional and then uh, render is, uh, is mandatory. Uh, obviously, we could move uh, this, uh, this template to a template uh, LEX file. Um, but the first time the uh, stateful component is rendered, all these, com all these uh, callbacks are invoked. So preload with a list of assigns, mount uh, that, and we've seen before is to initialize the state, update assigns socket to update the, the assigns uh, and the data in our component with new data and render to render our component. Preload, mount and update are optional callbacks. And uh, in the first render, all the four callbacks are invoked um, and mount is invoked only once, uh, just in the first render. Uh, then in all the other renders, uh, only preload, uh, update and render uh, are invoked. We are not going to use uh, preload, uh, but it's pretty useful when we need to load uh, data, for example, uh, from uh, the database in an efficient way. Let's consider the case where uh, a component uh, is used to uh, render many items, many components uh, uh, in the view, and each component needs to get some data from the database uh, with a query. Sometime, if we have many components, making one query per component would be inefficient. So a better way is to load the data for all the components, for all the items uh, with just a single query. And uh, in uh, preload list of assigns, we can do exactly that. We receive a list of assigns where each element of this list is a component assigns map. Uh, so we can uh, uh, make a single query, a single database query if we need, and, and we return a list of updated assigns. So for example, uh, we can implement uh, preload, uh, just an example, uh, to list, uh, to um, log this list of assigns and see uh, how it works. So list of assigns label uh, preload. Uh, this function logs uh, and inspect and uh, prints the uh, list of assigns and returns uh, the list of assigns. So this uh, preload callbacks uh, must uh, return a list of assigns. Uh, then, uh, we remove uh, these two callbacks and we temporarily uh, add all the products here. So YT coins, available products, which means that here in this uh, for comprehension, uh, these are, uh, this list is, uh, um, is made by all the available products. So for all the products, uh, for each product, we render a live component, a product component. So when the browser connects, uh, preload uh, in the first render, preload is uh, invoked one time with the list of all the uh, assigns. So each item is an assigns uh, for one specific component in this case, 
for the product component um, Coinbase BTC USD. But the live view uh, process crashes because the product component uh, tries uh, to use uh, the uh, product and uh, trade um, assigns in the live uh, EX template uh, returned by render. So let's move to product component uh, and uh, yeah, we use product and uh, trade in, in the template. So when product component is first rendered, it needs uh, to get the most recent trade from the historical. So we use the update uh, callback, so assigns socket. So remember the default implementation of this callback merges the assigns into the socket. Uh, if we don't do it, we will not have uh, the assigns passed with the live component function inside the socket. So here we could decide to merge all the, uh, using the assign function, all the assigns uh, to the socket. But actually, uh, I prefer to do it manually. So um, first we get a product from the assigns, which is the ID. Then we um, get a new socket using the assign function and we pipe the socket into assign. So in this first assign, we assign the product, product, which is used inside here in the template uh, and which is product assigns ID. Then we assign uh, the most recent trade, trade, and we use poetic coins, get last trade, uh, and we use the product. And then we return OK and socket. So uh, in this way, we use uh, the pipe operator. So it's a pipeline. And this could be, uh, we could use um, assign function in a different way, passing multiple assigns in this way. Uh, socket, uh, the product. So we pass a keyword list, uh, product product, and then uh, trade, uh, poetic coins, uh, get last trade, and we pass the product. Okay, so now we can use uh, product and trade inside the template here. Let's see the result. Okay, so let's add Coinbase, Bitcoin, uh, US dollar, and we get Bitcoin, US dollar. So what happens uh, when the trade returned by the historical is nil? We can handle this case implementing a second uh, product uh, render close. So the first close, it's, it's this one uh, where we have a valid uh, trade uh, struct. We can pattern match the trade here and check that it's not nil. Then we implement a second render close, which handles all the other cases. And we can copy and paste this one. It could be anything, but let's copy and paste this one. So this returns a live EEX uh, template. So the product uh, is uh, always a valid, uh, product struct should be always a valid uh, struct, uh, product struct. So here, instead of trade price, you can use three dots. So here products is strange and also here we can uh, leave uh, this div empty. And let's restart our server. Uh, so the historical shouldn't have any, uh, any trade in the map. And as you can see, the um, nil trade is handled correctly. Now, if we add, for example, uh, Coinbase BTC USD to our dashboard, we immediately see that uh, it's not updated. The first render works correctly, but uh, it's, uh, it's not updated. 
When a product is added to the products list in the crypto dashboard live uh, module, the function calls uh, Poetic Coins subscribe to trades. So we see here that it calls a subscribe uh, to trades to subscribe to the pub subtopic to get new trade messages. The component, uh, the product component uh, lives in the same live view process. It can handle its own events uh, because it's stateful, but it can't receive messages from uh, the pub sub. Only the crypto uh, dashboard live model uh, which implements uh, the uh, live view behavior, Phoenix live view behavior, can receive messages uh, and handle them with the handle info callback. But there is a way uh, to send uh, updated data from the view to the component using the send update function. So we're going to in mount to remove the trades map because we don't need to hold uh, the trades in the view uh, since each component has uh, inside its state uh, the most recent trade. We just uh, keep a list of products. So we can render the products here. We can enumerate the products here and render uh, and call a live component uh, for each one. Here, instead of up updating the trades map, what we do is to use the send update to send an update to the component. So the first argument is the module, which is PyTicon Web, product, component, and then the assigns. The most important one is the ID, which uh, is used to identify the component, which is the product, so trade product. So only this component is updated. And then the trade the trade itself, and we return uh, the same socket. So when we use this function send update, the preload, uh, then the update callbacks are uh, invoked, and then obviously uh, the render uh, callback is invoked. So at the moment, every time this update callback is invoked, it loads the trade from the historical. We need to handle the case where it receives the trade uh, uh, in the assigns here uh, from the view uh, via send update. So we use update, we pattern match the assigns, here trade, socket, when uh, the trade is not nil, no, is nil, trade, while in this case, uh, trade is nil or there isn't any uh, trade key inside the science, so it's fine to load the trade in uh, from the historical and if trade is still nil, uh, we will render the component. Will render. Uh, we'll use this um, this template uh, without the trade uh, key. So inside here, what we need to do is just to assign the trade into the socket. So remember, this is a stateful component. So we have the product uh, in the uh, socket assigns. So we just need to assign the trade here and return the, uh, the updated socket. Let's see how it works. So let's try to add Bitcoin US dollar. Okay, there is an issue, it crashes. So here, key trades not found and uh, it seems that I left uh, some uh, logic that deals with uh, the trades map in the crypto dashboard live module. So if we, let's check if we go here, so handle info is fine, handle event is fine. So inside here, add product, you see here that we update the trades to get the 
uh, most recent trade from the historical. We don't need it anymore because this is handled by uh, by the uh, component itself. And and that's it. It should work now. So let's add Bitcoin US dollar and it works. So let's see if it updates. You see that it updates correctly. The big difference here is that the Crypto Dashboard Live render callback is called only when the products list is updated. When a new trade is received, the view updates directly the specific component, sending only the updated data of that component to the browser. So to appreciate how efficient now the update is, let's add a few other products. So let's add uh, Bitstamp, uh, Bitcoin USD, Ethereum, US dollar, which as you can see, still needs to receive uh, a trade. Uh, I've just restarted the server, so probably it's because that. Uh, and Ethereum, uh, for Bitstamp, and let's, ins let's inspect here, we get, so we immediately notice that only the component data is sent over the wire. As you can see here, there is this C1 and then just the data of this specific component. So it's really efficient. Let's see now how events are handled in a stateful component. So we add a remove button here. So a button, we use the remove class uh, and we use the Phoenix click binding to send a remove uh, product event. So uh, by default, this event is sent not to the component, but to the uh, crypto dashboard uh, live uh, view. If we want to send the event to the component, we just need to add uh, and, and use the Phoenix target attribute. So Phoenix target to target the receiver. Uh, and in this case, if we want to target this component, we use myself. Okay. In this way, uh, the event is sent to myself, uh, which is the component. And here, uh, we just need to handle the event, handle event, uh, and uh, we put our match, remove our product, uh, params, uh, and the socket. And here we could change uh, the state of the component in some way. But in this case, we need to remove uh, the product uh, from the products list in the view. So it's useful to handle this event directly in the crypto dashboard uh, live module. So we remove this, we remove the here, uh, the Phoenix target. So we target the view. And we also need uh, to uh, pass a parameter, the product ID. So uh, Phoenix value, product ID. And the product ID is the string of the product. So we convert the product to a string, which is the ID, product. Okay, so we go into uh, the crypto dashboard live module. We go here and we add a new handle event close. And we do what we did here. So from uh, to get the product from the product ID and it would be nice to have a function, a private function, which is product from string, something like that, which uh, from the product ID, ID uh, returns uh, the product. So we use this also here. Product ID, 
product. And here we add a handle event uh, callback that matches the uh, remove product. So we have remove product, we put our match product ID. So first we get the product using this function, product ID, and then we update the socket. We need to remove the product from the list. So socket, which is the updated socket, update socket, products, we update the products list, we uh, delete, so this is the products list and the second argument is the product we want to delete and this function returns uh, the updated list, uh, so the list without the product and we return no reply socket. So just to recap, when we click remove product, um, when we click this button here, a remove product click event is sent along with the product ID to the uh, crypto dashboard uh, live view, and uh, which handles this event uh, with this callback, updating the products list and returning the updated socket. Then LiveView re-renders the view and it tells the browser uh, to remove the component. So let's uh, see the result. Okay, so we add a few products. So Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, then Ethereum also for Bitstamp. So we want to remove Litecoin. We click X and as you can see, uh, the component is removed, the product is removed. Also here and this and this, so it works.